This class is about projectile motion, which we consider to be a special case of uh, curvilinear motion. And to start out with, we uh, have to begin with an assumption, and that is that for these problems, we're going to ignore any air resistance. And certainly for high velocities, uh, that's not really a good assumption. But for the problems we're going to work, uh, it's, it's uh, not unreasonable. So if we make that assumption, there's only one force acting on the projectile as it, uh, as it flies, and that is the weight. And so if I'm doing a simple F equals MA, then the acceleration is only going to be in the y direction, and its value is going to be g, the acceleration due to gravity. Negative because uh, we usually have positive y being upwards, and uh, of course gravity is downward. Uh, with that assumption, there's no force acting in the x direction, and so the acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero, so constant velocity in the x direction. Now, a lot of problems will give you the initial velocity and the launch angle. And from that, you come up with the, um, divide that into components to have the initial velocity in the x direction and the initial velocity in the y direction with the cosine and sine as shown here. All right, once we know those initial values, we can then use the same equations that we had for rectilinear motion because we can um, evaluate the x and y components independently. So in the y direction, we have that constant acceleration. And plugging that acceleration into our uh, equations, we get the um, constant acceleration equations for velocity in the y direction and the uh, displacement or the distance y. And of course, we can also use the form that does not include time. In the x direction, it's even simpler because of the fact that the acceleration is 0. And so the position at any point is just the initial velocity times the time, uh, plus whatever initial value of x we've, uh, we've defined, which usually we start at 0. So here's a typical problem. We're given a velocity, we're given a launch angle, and we want to find where it lands. Sometimes the uh, landing point and launch point will be at the same height. Other times, like shown here, they'll be different. So in this case, to solve this problem, what I would do is look at what's known. What would be known at this point would be the value of y at the point where it lands. So we'll set that uh, equal to the value of h. Uh, but again, got to be consistent with how you define y and y naught. That is, if I define y from the launch point, then my landing point will be y equals h. On the other hand, if I wanted to set y as uh, up at the roof, in other words, at the landing point, then I would be landing at y equals 0, but I have to put my y naught in as minus h. So whichever way you do it, as long as you're consistent about where you measure it from, the equation comes out to be the same. And so once you uh, set that value of y, your only unknown will be time. You'll calculate that, plug that into your equation for x, and you can find out how far, uh, how far the projectile traveled. Now, if it's like this, where I've shown the landing point is above the uh, uh, launch point, then you're going to get a quadratic equation. And that's going to have two positive roots. And your tendency, uh, usually when you see two positive roots, is to choose the lower one. But of course, in this case, you want to choose the greater value. Because what you're uh, saying is that y is equal to that final height at two points. Well, one of those points is going to be on the way up. The second point will be on the way down when it lands. If you flip that around so that now that you're um, launching from a higher point, then you're going to get a positive and a negative root for your quadratic equation. So, of course, the negative root uh, is meaningless here. Mathematically, it just means if you extend that uh, parabola back before the launch time, then that would be where the, where the uh, y value uh, would be at the landing point. But obviously it doesn't mean anything uh, physically, so just ignore the negative root. And if the landing point is equal to the um, uh, launch point, uh, you end up with, of course, one of the roots being equal to zero, so you don't actually have to um, solve a quadratic equation then. And some problems will ask you to find uh, how high does the projectile get? What's its maximum height? So there's two ways to do that. One way is to set the velocity in the y direction equal to zero. Because as we've discovered earlier, when a particle changes direction, that is, it's in this case, from going up to going down, then momentarily at that maximum point, the derivative is going to be equal to zero. So the velocity in the y will be equal to zero at the maximum height. Uh, 
and from that you can find t and then plug in the equation to find y. But an easier way to do that is to ignore the uh, or to bypass the time altogether is use that equation with the vy squared. Again, you know the initial velocity, you know that final velocity is equal to zero, and that way you can solve y minus y naught, and that'll give you the maximum height. Uh, now there are some problems, that, especially ones we'll work in class, where instead of the unknown uh, being a distance or a maximum height, uh, we may not know uh, the initial launch angle, or we may not know the um, initial velocity. But in those cases, we have to know more than we did in the previous ones. In other words, like the problem shown here, we know where this hits the wall. So we know a value of uh, x and a value of y. And of course, those have to occur at the same value of time. So in those cases, you're going to end up with simultaneous equations. And if you're trying to find the angle, then you're going to end up having nonlinear equations. You might have to use a numerical uh, solution for that. So in the next class, we'll keep going with curve linear motion, but we'll use a different coordinate system. We we'll use ones that are along the uh, normal and tangential to the path. So when you're driving around a curve, you know the speed, you know the, uh, how fast you're going. And so your rate of change of speed um, would be acceleration in the tangential direction, and as we'll see, uh, the acceleration will be back toward the center of curvature.